Hello, my name's Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV 7. We have a great new show. It's called The Fireside Chat. And this is our fifth episode. And what we do in the show, we'd like you to have a chance to meet with some of the people you've elected and you work with as citizens of Queen Anne's County. I'm delighted to have uh, tonight a good friend of mine, uh, Sheriff Gary Hoffman. Gary, thanks for being with thanks, us tonight. Fred. Thank you. And congratulations on getting reelected. Thank you very much. Okay, like you and I were talking off the screen, it was a long campaign, it was wasn't it? It was a long campaign. Okay. It's been a long couple Long years. Process. Yes, it has. Now, Gary, here's what we do. We like, everyone knows that you, uh, the thing I always hear about Gary Hoffman or Sherry Hoffman, Freddie's everywhere. I mean, I don't care whether it's a clam feast or a carnival or a school event, you're always there. And the community really loves that. Thanks. How about we get to know you a little bit and we're going to go through, like we've done with the commissioners, where you grew up, okay, that type of sure. thing. So then people can say, hey, that's pretty cool. I, Hoffman and I went to the same school or grew up. Is that you comfortable with that? Absolutely. Okay. How about that start? Uh, where did you grow up? Where's, where was mom and dad? Where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in Annapolis. Okay. Um, I grew up. I grew up there as a kid in a, a small community called Epping Forest. Okay. So. And how about early elementary school? Um, I went to St. Mary's. Um, oh, the Catholic school right downtown. I did. Okay. I did. I went there through 10th grade. All right. And then I transferred over to Annapolis after that. Okay. Now, growing up, and this is what I always get a kick out of, uh, sports guy, theater guy, stamp collector, what was what was little Gary Hoffman doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did the things that most, most kids did. You know, the, obviously, I was a big outdoors person. Um, you know, hunting, fishing. Now this is Annapolis 60s. Help me with the age. This is Annapolis in the 70s, 80s. Okay, just when you know? Annapolis was getting the boom a little bit. Sure. Is that correct? Sure. Okay. Right. Um, you know, it was definitely a very, uh, very avid uh, outdoors person as, as a kid. Okay. It was nothing to. Now that's get, fishing, hunting type guy. Fishing, yeah. um, okay. hunting, and as well, um, not so much the hunting end of things, but the fishing, the crabbing, okay. being out on a boat. Um, I grew up on the Severn River. So it was nothing to grab the little flat bottom boat. And just get out there. A little seven and a half horsepower okay. on it. And by the way, that was probably at age, you know, 11 or 12. All right. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was definitely young. I remember out there soft shelling. Your feet got wet early. As absolutely. They used to say it. Okay. Absolutely. Right. So it was definitely good times. Now, how about, how about uh, teachers? Anyone that, you know, every once in a while I sit back and think, wow, that teacher changed my life. Any outstanding elementary or junior Sister Mary teacher? Calabrese. Whack. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> she treated you. Well, how, now how about mom and dad uh, in terms of influence? Uh, mm -hmm. Dad, law enforcement? Where, where did all this no, law enforcement? Dad, dad was prior military okay. and um, served in the Marine Corps. And then my mom worked actually for the State House for the General Assembly. Okay. Worked there for... See, we were a real Annapolis right. family here. Oh, yeah, we were, okay. definitely. You know, my grandparents uh, are... My grandmother's still alive. She's 96, 97 years old. Good for her. Yeah, for still her. in Annapolis, still okay. in the same house. Now, so, okay, we went through school. How did you, what got you to the shore? Well, I'll tell you, I really, the, kind of a funny story here, I mm -hmm. really didn't have the intent of doing law enforcement. I was, you know, involved in, with working for a guy who had a vending and amusements company at the okay. time. And that was kind of my passion, the electronics. Um, now, this is a young man. We're talking this about 18, is, yeah, started about started working for a Rumble vending when I was okay. 15. Oh, 15. So okay. I really had, you know, a good, good career path. It was a good industry to get into. Um, I enjoyed that field. And I had planned on actually sticking with that. But kind of what changed my life was I met a gentleman who was an Anne Arundel County police officer named Tom Conley. Okay. And good Irishman, right? Very good Irishman. Prior Marine Corps guy. Mm -hmm. And... I had known him from Annapolis Mall, where I had worked part-time, and he said to me, you know, you really should, probably should pursue a career in law enforcement. And I thought, I, I didn't want to do that. This I is a friend of the family. No, this no, no. was just just a, a random meeting? police Chance officer meeting? who I met, you know, at the Annapolis Mall. And, and this yeah. guy was a really good guy. And he was very rigid, very stern, uh, very strict, but he's kind of like, you know, and maybe he saw something that I didn't see at sure, that time in my sure. life. But he said, um, I'd really like you to consider this. And I, I did a ride along with him. and. And I, at first I thought, you know, the typical perception of police officers is they're always kicking in doors, throwing people down to the mm -hmm. ground and arresting people. And, and most, very few of the, very, a very small portion of the public has interaction with law enforcement, but those that do, sometimes it's not always a positive right. experience. Mm -hmm. So as a kid, you know, I had been pulled over, well, all kids got pulled over, you know, and you, you kind of had this rumor or perception of what law enforcement police officers sure. might have been. And it wasn't the best at the time. And I thought, well, I kind of didn't want to do that. You know, I, I wanted to do something else. And I actually rode with this guy. And what really impressed me the most, and what I thought was, is there were two sides of policing. 
there were the men and women who were out there doing the duties that they were called to do and making that arrest when they had to. But Tom Conley was the police officer who actually was out there talking with the public, resolving problems, resolving Good issues. Good old-fashioned policeman Absolutely. kind of walking his beat. Yeah. A whole different perspective right. that I didn't ever see or was unaware of. And kind of his motivation and his, you know, influence kind of got me into that thought process. I started with Annapolis City Police as one of their first auxiliary Yeah, how old? What were we, 21, 22? Or I was or? probably 18 at that oh, time. Oh, very young, very yeah, young. Okay. 18. Um, started with them as one of their first auxiliary police officers. Um, I was able to get hired as a summer cop in Ocean City, which okay. was a fabulous <laughs> job. <I'm laughs> Stories to be told on the boardwalk. Yeah, right? we're not going into that. No, we don't worry. Okay, we don't. Um, it's no, a family show. Okay. Yeah, I know, I know. Just, we're teasing. No, it was a great time. You know, and, and you, you met such a diverse... So you're auxiliary policeman in Annapolis. Right, a volunteer position in Annapolis. Get a summer job. Got a summer place. job in Ocean okay. City. Okay. And um, it, it was really nice. It was really a good thing. You know, it was a very diverse uh, group of people to work with, very diverse community. I was able to apply the things that I had learned from Officer Conley um, and quickly the community policing side of things and resolving problems was something I really liked. Okay. So you well saw it's not, work. like you said, the public doesn't understand it's not always using a pistol or a weapon or knocking down doors, Correct. it's dealing with people and solving right. problems. So that's what this guy shows you a bit. And, and one thing that I learned from him is that, you know, I am no different than someone in the public. I just have yeah. a different job to do. Sure. And my job is to assist them and, and make it better. So I've used that philosophy my whole career. But getting back to that, uh, Ocean City was great. Um, I was really lucky to be And hired. what years was this in the 70s or in no, the 80s? No, this was in the early 90s. Oh, early 90s? 89 oh, okay. and 90 now. Oh, okay, all right. So I graduated high school in 84. Okay. Um, you know, 89 and 90, uh, Ocean City Police. And um, I was very lucky to be hired by the Centerville Police Department. They were hiring in 1991. Okay. And I came here. So your first step is through the Centerville Town Police. All yep. right. They were the now ones. Now who that was the chief? Who was it? Was Doug it Tar Kreitz. Button? No, oh, no, 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 it was Doug Kreitz. Uh, great Kreitz. guy. Okay. Great guy. I'll okay. tell you, he really was a good uh, mentor. He was a very good, okay. good police chief. Um, he did a nice job. He was. He liked talking to the public and work with him. So we fit in. But um, I had you know different ambitions and kind of things in my life changed a little mm -hmm. bit. So mm -hmm. I applied with the sheriff's office. How long were we did town? Two years. Oh, two years. Okay. So, so that was your real first summer Ocean City. That's a little bit of fun and a little bit of work. But full-time policeman, two years here in town. Okay. That's correct, All yes. Right. And uh, the town was great. Um, started a lot of the programs here, you know, some of the community policing stuff. Mm -hmm. And walking the footbeat was, was something I enjoyed doing, talking to the residents. And I wanted to transfer to the sheriff's office. They picked me up in 93. And I've been with the sheriff's office. Since 93? Since 93. Okay. All right. And then when you got in with the sheriff's department, I mean, just on the streets, on the car, what were you doing when you first got in with the sheriff? Started out in patrol. Okay. And that was that was a lot of fun, doing the patrol stuff. And then I actually um, was asked to go and do a grant-funded position, which was community policing. Okay. Which I enjoyed doing. So. And, and make sure everybody knows, because I remember you made quite an impact. What is a community, what's community policing and what is it? What I do, think what it's a do? little, I think it's, it's, it's going back to the, traditional values of policing when the police officer used to walk the beat, mm -hmm. knew the community he served, and dealt with all kinds of different issues and problems, but followed them through to resolve. Okay. You know, so it could have been something as a neighbor dispute over a barking dog or a fence issue or I mean, we, anything that law enforcement gets called for. So I was able to do that and I really enjoyed doing that. So I got promoted in the community policing unit um, to corporal. Um, did a very short period of time in the drug task force working with them on a um, drug investigation, a very successful one in the county, and then was promoted to sergeant and uh, was a sergeant in patrol for a long period of time. Had a lot of different duties throughout the years and then was elected as sheriff in 2006. What was, go back to the little history, people, we know you've been elected three times, okay? What was the atmosphere when you first ran? Was it was someone that was Crosley or somebody leaving? Get, history, yeah. help me out with the what was, what was going on? Um, Sheriff Crosley was here and okay. he was retiring. And he was the long. Did you tell me off air? Was he the longest I think serving? Sixteen years. Sixteen years. Sheriff, okay. You know, so he and he originally came from the town police as well. Okay. So is that a natural progression for sheriffs or not? Um, 
I'm not really sure. I think yeah. some sheriffs are there for a couple of years and some sheriffs, you know, okay. it just depends, I think. So Crosley gets out after 16 years. He did. And you decided to run. I did, yes. Now how, explain me, since you've just gone through a campaign, <laughs> how did it go from being a very effective sergeant of the, of the sheriff's department, all of a sudden you're thrown in this political arena? Big difference? Are you prepared for Absolutely. it? Absolutely. I was not prepared for it. Okay. Um, and I, other people say, well, you know, I'm not a politician or whatever the case mm -hmm. is, but Anytime you're involved in politics, you're a politician. You're a politician. Unfortunately, yeah. um, you know I think you need to use that to to a very positive approach. And being the liaison, um, it's a whole different mix because no longer are you just out there enforcing the laws, but now you're in a position where you're managing a budget, you're working with community issues and concerns, you're dealing with personnel issues and things like that. So the one benefit that I had was prior to becoming sheriff, I had had two successful businesses within the county okay um and and a lot of business background uh, in business administration so that yeah, i've got to ask you did this and did this come from mom or dad where i mean one of the things i admire about you and i know uh, members of the community and certainly uh, people i talked about politics you're everywhere mm -hmm. so that, i mean was dad that who was the extroverted person in the family or is this just something that gary hoffman it just happened um i think it's something that just happened my dad my dad's outgoing you okay. know, my mom's outgoing as well. Um, but it was something that I really, I, I don't think of myself. You seem to enjoy it. I, I mean, do, a lot of people, I, do. Do, I see a lot of people, as you do, whether it's uh, sheriffs or any other politician, they don't really like the process. You mm -hmm. obviously enjoy, I mean, I've seen you work fairs pretty hard yeah. and carnivals. You obviously enjoy it. it that's. I think the difference is, is and, I, and you hit the nail right on the mm -hmm. head, I really enjoy what I'm doing. Sure. I don't look at that as work. I mean, okay. I think it's the expectation of the public that, I be at Certain events, events. Okay. and represent them as well. And I think that's where, I mean, there's the fair runs for like seven days. Oh, it's a kill. And it's a marathon. I'm there every single night, and yes, I don't mind are. it. I don't. And uh, you're there from the time that the gate opens, and I swear you're there when the, when the sun has been down a couple hours. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and same with the carnivals. You know, I think it's so important to support our fire departments and support our police, to, you know, the fire departments and police organizations and things like that. I think so, I mean, Summertime's busy, you know that. Oh, yeah. You just went through all that yes. too. Yeah. So you have all the carnivals. So you the enjoy fairs, it. I That's what it. you tell me. Tell me, I think you do a real good job of kids. I mean, mm -hmm. I get a kick out of it. I've watched the booths you set up in the department of the Southersville uh, uh, Carnival this year, and of course the county fair. There's always little badges and mm -hmm. rulers and stuff like that. Well, I mean, that's just, you like kids, obviously, but I mean, where does that. Is that something policemen are taught, or how would that? Get? I mean, I think you do a good job when you go in the schools and speak. Thank you. Where'd that come from? Um, I think that's one of the things that I realized as a kid is that I didn't have any connection other than to this one person who tried to. This mentor guy who me. changed your life, right? Is Too he still alive, by the way? He's I, not. He, oh, he passed sorry. away, yeah. unfortunately, okay. a few okay. years ago. But um, the one thing I can say is that I didn't have a connection with law enforcement. You know, I didn't have this this connection that I think kids today should have. I mean, law enforcement personnel are people that the kids can trust, and I, I don't want them to be afraid of them. So I think the earlier that we talk to our kids and not be afraid to talk to our kids about issues that they face, I think that level of communication needs to exist. Um, yesterday, for an hour and a half, for two hours, I had a Cub Scout group, um, a pack, come through my, to my office right. and actually personally spend a couple hours with them giving them a tour and all this. Right through the sheriff's office here in town. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and that's just who I am. I think it's important that I interact with our kids as well as our seniors, but I do it when I'm off too, Fred. Okay. You know, you enjoy, like you said, rarely, you enjoy but, it, don't you? you know, yeah. My father used to say to me, the ideal is a job. If you can go to every day to a job you're in love with, right? And you're mm -hmm. obviously Absolutely. in love with your job. What, now, let's go, let's just take our crystal ball out. As Queen Anne's County changes, we're 40 or 50,000, we knock on wood, you, you and a lot of other people have done a great job, okay, I think, handling the crime and the violence, what we do have. Where do you see the Sheriff's Department going down the road here? I mean, we're going to get bigger. Is the community, what, if you had a crystal ball, what would, you, what would you like to say? I think over time, the office is going to expand. I think that that's inevitably going to happen as, mm -hmm. you know, more population comes to this wonderful county that sure, we have. Sure, sure. Um, so I think that's de definitely going to happen. I think we're, we do a really good job at full service policing. We do, you know, canine narcotics courts. We do everything that all of the law enforcement's do, and we right. use technology right. very well. Um, from social media to the little gyrocopter that we have to, you know, the, the rubber boat that we use, <laughs> the little Zodiac boat, but we use technology and grant funding very well. 
I think if that continues, we're going to continue to to still provide you know an excellent You're level the leading of service. Edge of Absolutely. The last time you mentioned a couple of things I didn't know. I'm down and people in Route 8 and people said, Fred, did you know in, in that airport they've got a gyrocopter? Mm -hmm. Tell me, what, what's a gyrocopter? How's it used in the law enforcement? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't uh, flown in it. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm not either. It didn't look like I'm going to fly. But uh, what do we use that for? It's really it's really cool. It's actually, uh, it, it, it's just this little, this little thing. It's probably, I'm going to be wrong on this, but yeah. it's probably, you know, 14 feet long. And it's got a gyro blade. Okay. And it's got like little wings on it. But Department of Justice actually this is all through us, a grant. All through yes, a grant right. allows a police agency to use that. They pay for the maintenance. They pay for the the fuel. They they pay for everything with this thing. Mm. Um, but it's we've used it in a lot of situations: searches for missing persons, Alzheimer's. Um, we've used it for the drug task force. Looking. So for, you send the gyro up with the pilot, mm -hmm. and he can be with the person on the ground. Hey, look at I think there's a. Well, he has an observer in there that actually oh, flies. There's two with of them in this. So thing. the deputy that we have is contractual. He only flies when needed. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, he works in the courts full time. Um, I see a show here, Gary. Mr. I know. It Fred takes. in the back of that gyro. Maybe we can work that Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, we'll do it. it. We'll it do it. Neat. Okay. Um, but we use but that. But it helps. Use, it's helped it, you. it does help us out, and and one of the things that it does as well is. Um, you know, when the cost of this, I think, is 50 bucks an hour to operate this thing. I mean, you know, compared to it's nothing. taking taking a medevac or some real important aircraft out sure. of service just to look for a marijuana grow or something like that, this this tool is much very more cost effective and very effective. And it makes our community safer because we have it. How about the rubber zodiac? Tell rubber zodiac. That. Yeah. that thing at first, when I saw it, I wasn't going to get in it. Wasn't it, it like, parked out in front? Don't you? Yeah. Sometime it's, a pot, it's, a, it's like a. It's got rubber rails yeah. around it, yeah. it's, and, but it's got a hard, hard hull. Um, we reached an agreement with Zodiac of, on Ken Island, mm -hmm. and they actually gave us the boat under the Homeland Security Grant. Okay. Um, I Again, get a, another grant program. Absolutely. For a few I, guys. You know, anything we can do to, you know, and, and everyone says, well, if grants aren't always free. Well, as long as they're free, we're going to continue take to take them. Um, when they're not, then we'll have to reevaluate the program. But the one thing I can say with this is that everyone, you know, you have to have these tools. We, we live on an island. Sure. I mean, Ken Island is Ken I an island. There's a lot of water you know, around There's a lot of water here. around yeah. it, you know, and, and you have to have the tools and of resources. Course. And course. it's not something that gets used a lot, but it's, it's paid for, you know, out of seas, okay. funds, and grants. So funds these are things that make our community safer. They're Absolutely. paid for by grants. It's making your job easier and Absolutely. my life safer. Okay? Absolutely. Gary, where were you mentioned technology? Where, where are we, I mean, in terms of we're on the leading edge of technology, mm -hmm. what type of things are we doing? Um, we've got the mobile data terminals in the cars okay. where the person can run so that the information. that means the policeman can just type in? Okay. They scan the driver's license when they need to do an accident report. They scan the license. It yeah. populates the fields. Yeah. It's amazing. I, I don't even know where technology is going to go in 10 years. I mean, okay. I wish we knew. But it's interesting because it, it makes the, the officer more efficient so they can, one, get the information done as quickly as possible, interact with the victim, okay. and... You know, All get them being on their done way. on computer. You know, one of the things we'll have to do is we talk about. I see ten more shows coming. It would be cool to take a ride in the Zodiac mm -hmm. with the camera, sure. Uh, the plane, but also just a ride around. I mean, mm -hmm. Have you done that yet with a camera and the crew in the back of the car? No, we oh, love we to should have do. You. Well, absolutely. If we can work on the producer, I know who put me up in the plane. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> what you do? Well, Gary, look, we only have about two minutes left. All right. Uh, you know, I wanted to say uh, one thing. You say what you got to say. Not cut you off. No, no, it's your show. You didn't ask me what my favorite books are. Oh, I'm gonna, I always <laughs> give you the last five. I'm gonna get you, the secret's out, okay. All right, we always end the show, you took it away from me, I asked you five fun questions. Number one, if you could go, if, remember I have a magic wand for about a minute here. Okay. If you could go anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world, where would you like to go? You know, I, I watched one of your shows the other night and okay. I actually looked at those questions okay. and, and I'm gonna tell you that I love clear water, palm trees, okay. sand. Oh, um, especially when it's 23 degrees outside. Uh, you know, I, I will, anywhere that there's you like warm, warm air, I do. I you, really do. You like and I had air. that discussion warm yeah. weather. If you could, and I, I love the answers, if you could have dinner, anyone in the history world, I can bring them back, put here, I will leave. Who would you like to sit down and have a this? I've had anything from JFK to Jesus to Gandhi. Who would mm -hmm. uh, Gary Hoffman like to be? You know, I would, honestly, mine would probably be Jesus as well. Okay, okay. And, and one of my reasons for that is we have such an incredible world, such a mm -hmm. beautiful place, and we have such wonderful people. Um, you know, the, the process and the beauty and creation is, is just, you know, just having that discussion. You like to sit down and say, how? How'd absolutely, you do okay. absolutely. You know, he's created a wonderful place for us, and it's up to us to Great. continue. Two more. 
five years from now, okay, where would Gary Hoffman like to be? I mean, you're a young man, so <laughs> I, I, I think I probably know the answer, but if you, again, you want to stay in law enforcement, stay in this role, where would you like to be? I do. I plan on, I plan on as long as the community wants to keep me, I would love to stay in law enforcement okay. you know, for you know, at least another 10, 12 years. You're a young man. You've got plenty of that. I am. And plus, you got a wife going to uh, college, so you better support <laughs> her. Going okay. back to school, absolutely. And last one, and we'll get you off the hook here. If you could have a dream, anything you'd like to have for the sheriff's department, we've you know we've talked about the zodiacs and the technology. Is there something? If I had a couple million dollars, I could write you a check. Is there something you'd like to have that we don't have? I mean, a drone. Since drones are the big fad, is there something? Hey, you know what? I saw the New York City police had something. Is there anything? Or are you pretty happy with what you got? We're very happy with what we have. We've, okay. we've really done well. Okay, well, good. All right. Well, look at Gary. We're gonna. This is gonna be the end of part one of the program. We're gonna do an add-on in the second. Thank you very much, and you're Thanks, so very friend. fortunate to met that mentor at the Annapolis Mall and someone who changed your life. Thank okay? you. I feel so as well. Okay, Gary, thanks. I really appreciate your time. Now, before we end this, let's you and I take a little stroll okay. to the back of the studio here, and we'll talk a little bit about Queen Anne's County's Most Wanted. Sounds great. Please go ahead. Now, Gary, I think this is a familiar spot for you. Tell, how about tell the audience what you do here and what this other great show you have is? Well, this green room is really familiar, okay. I'll tell you, because we do most of our Queen Anne's County's Most Wanted shows. And tell folks what this, that is. We do most of the Queen Anne's County's Most Wanted shows here in this green room. Um, what we do, Fred, is we, we come in here and we use the teleprompter that's in front of us, and we actually write the script. Uh, Dale Patrick, myself, okay. uh, one of the young ladies at the office, they actually take and write write the script, we all make sure it's right, and we come in here and verify the wanted persons, and then we actually do the most wanted show here, and then Ted actually imposes the pictures up behind us on the green screen. Now I've heard from a number of people, not only is it a terrific show, but you've had some amazing results. We have, we have really put social media on the cutting edge in Queen Anne's County, <laughs> keeping <laughs> us safer. I mean, if we have a bad guy, we put it out there. Okay, now tell me, I've heard, now you tell me if this is true or not, all of a sudden, people see Queen Anne's County Most Wanted. What type of people are calling you and say, hey, that's my former boyfriend, or hey, <laughs> fill the public in with that a bit? That's hilarious, because I'll tell you, one, I do make my cell phone public to everybody, mm -hmm. and it's so funny because I'll get ex-wives, ex-husbands, ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, um, all calling us up saying, hey, I know where so-and-so is, I know where so-and-so <laughs> is, where so-and-so is coming to pick up the kids. I mean, it's just, it's, it's funny, but they do help us out. It's a sad situation that, these persons are in a position they are as being wanted, but they do need to do the right thing. Well, they've broken the law. Absolutely, right? yes, and they yeah. need to turn themselves in. And I'll tell you, we've had most wanted persons actually come into our office, walk into the lobby and say, you know what, that picture that you profiled me is horrible. I <laughs> want that like off the there. Picture. We do not want, I do not want that picture on the internet. And we're like, okay, well, let's get rid of the warrant first, and then <laughs> Gary, we'll deal with that. Any idea of the number of people that program has got to, helped you? Dozens or hundreds? Or Probably hundreds. You know, hundreds of people. Hundreds of people that we have taken off the street. And, that um, and remember, you know, with social media, and you know this as well with your fireside chat, sure. I mean, once it's out there on the internet, it's out there. Oh, it's I for mean, real. It's, it's being real. seen in Glen Burnie. It's being seen okay. in Arundel County, Colorado. I mean, it's amazing when Ted actually showed us the different hits that the YouTube video gets all around the world, even in Australia. People were actually looking at that. Yes, right. they were. Okay. Yes, they were. Now, let me ask you, as the public watches this show, what if they do uh, happen to be watching your program, Queen Anne's County Most Wanted, and they do see the old boyfriend? Do you mm -hmm. see somebody? What do you want them to do? Well, we can, they can go right on our webpage and email us an anonymous tip. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll take the tip. We never disclose who gave us the information. So it's all done in a confidential manner. Absolutely. And then, or they can call the sheriff's office. I have people that call me directly and give me crime tips, give me most wanted person's information. Um, or if a person's out there who's wanted and sees themselves on the show, you know, come in and take care of it. Just get yeah. it over with. Clean but it up. Clean it actually, up. And, and, you know, part of the big thing, the partnership that we have with you, Queen Anne's County TV, um, is, is so great because the public wants information and they want it now. And this outlet provides that. So you can get the information you want, whether it's most wanted or safety tips or whatever. Uh, the public, the information's out there. They just have to use it, right? Absolutely. 
Now this show, it sounds like to me, it's the most popular, one of the most popular show in QAC TV7. It's working for you, so it's going to continue, right? It is, absolutely. We're going to continue it. I think it's just important to us. Um, the public likes looking at videos. They like looking at pictures. Uh, they want information. I think this is, like I said, a good venue, good avenue to get information out there. And we're going to plan on continuing that. Now, Gary, I always like to end my show with law enforcement officials or any agency officials. Let's tell the public, in, and we'll repeat it a couple times, if someone sees a crime or sees something that's dangerous, they should immediately call what number? Absolutely. If you see something that's a crime or suspicious, always dial 911. Directly go to the 911. It doesn't matter whether it goes to us, state police, Baybridge police, whoever. Just get that information to that right to the proper person. They'll start a police car rolling so that we can address get the, the issue. process Absolutely. going. Okay. If someone again sees Queen Anne's County Most Wanted, they should contact you via. They can contact the okay. office via the website, or okay. if it's critical, they can dial 911 and let us know where that wanted person is as well. Okay. And getting away from crime and dangerous situations, you do such a good job as a public speaker, and your office does such a great PR job. If someone just simply says, hey, I want to call the sheriff's department, and I want to try to arrange a speaker, what, who do you want them to contact? Absolutely. That? They can contact my office and just advise they want a speaker for something as simple as, you know, uh, social media presentations in the schools or whether we're addressing seniors and senior safety um, any of that stuff we'll definitely send somebody there um, a lot of times I will go out and do them but I have other persons in the office as well that love doing them as well and I can tell them they're gonna see you at every county fair <laughs> every school every event going on in the county and you'd like people to come up and say hey Sheriff Hoffman have I got something to tell you you encourage that right? absolutely because what I really like is when somebody even if they agree or disagree or if they have a problem or don't, come up and tell me. Come up and tell us what's going on because what really bothers me are the persons that walk by that don't tell us there's an issue and then we don't know. You so don't know how to help them. Give us a fair chance to, to fix it. Well, Gary, again, I want to thank you for being on part one of this Fireside Chat. Thanks. Thanks for reminding us about the wonderful job you do and Channel 7 does with Queen Anne's County Most Wanted. And as a citizen, I want to thank you. I think all of your PR efforts and your community service or community policing efforts are just outstanding. Well, thank you. I think it's time that we change this show now to poolside <laughs> chat. <laughs> That's coming in six months. It's 23 okay. degrees out there. All right. Gary, thank you again. I appreciate it. Thanks, Fred. Uh, my name's Fred McNeil. You've been watching QAC TV 7. Thank you for your time. My time is up, and we'll see you next time.